Cześć, mam na imię Andrzej. Hello everyone, my name is Andrzej. Welcome to the final video of our three part series of tutorials on how to design photonic integrated circuits with VPI in Design Suite. If you would like to catch up with the things that were shown and designed before, you can take a look at the previous videos. Today I would like to focus on creating a final design of the PAM4 transmitter. We will discuss time domain simulation and the hybrid time and frequency domain, resolve simulation deadlocks and carry out simulation with multiple runs. And to crown it all, we are going to visualize the eye diagram of our wonderful transmitter. As usual, I will take a practice driven approach, we will mostly do things with our setup and I will occasionally provide some theoretical observations. First of all, we are on a mission to replace this tunable electro-optic modulator with another module that can be actively driven. Bye-bye for now, tunable electro-optic modulator. Welcome the active externally driven one. An important thing to bear in mind here is that active elements cannot be simulated in S-matrix domain, so we need to set it back to auto. However, we can create a virtual galaxy with all passive elements and set the simulation domain in the galaxy to S-matrix. We can delete the control voltage schematic parameter as it does not exist anymore. As this electro-optic module is externally driven, we need to connect it with a new input port. Moreover, logical delays between the electro-optic modulator and the passive sub-circuit virtual galaxy are needed to prevent simulation deadlocks. For this, we can use the macro at S-matrix domain galaxy parameters. What it can do for you, it can add the enhanced folder and set the logical delay parameter to on. Let's save our galaxy as MZM and allow recreating the interface. And please be nice and close it afterwards. Now we can replace our MZI galaxies with MZM ones. The trick here is to make sure that the MZM galaxies stay outside the virtual galaxy. As we know, they contain an active component and cannot be simulated in S matrix domain. To drive our MZMs, we need to connect them to some electrical sources. For example, DC source modules. The upper DC source amplitude needs to be set to control voltage and the bottom amplitude to zero. This will allow us to reuse the sweeps created in previous videos. We can recycle our previous work. Nice, isn't it? We are going to achieve extraordinary things. And now comes the most interesting part. Let's change the simulation domain to time domain. The good news is we can do it via the macro. We need to set the sample rate to 5.12 terahertz, select the checkbox create virtual galaxies and click the finish button. There we go. One hindrance here is that the power meter module works only with signals in block mode. To convert sample mode signals into block mode signals, we need to add the sample to block module and place it before the power meter. There we go, let's run our sweep. See what happens? VP is not at all affected by the modulator replacement, exactly as expected. To make a pump for transmitter, we need two independent NRZ OOK driving signals, S1, S2, where S1 encodes the most significant bit, MSB, and S2 the least significant bit, LSB. Once the dependence of optical transmittance on the applied voltage is measured, the 0 and 1 level of LSB and MSB can be selected. To produce four equally spaced PAM4 levels, we need to choose the linear part of the DPMZM transfer function. The nice thing 
at this point is that we can use the markers to find out the proper values. Let's take MSB V0 equal to 5.5 and MSB V1 equal to 1 volt. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy to tell you that our circuit is done. Let's make a proper electrical driving now. Just one last effort and we will achieve our goals. What can I say? No pain, no gain. We are going to add a few important building blocks to our setup. Two PRBS elements, pseudo-random data sequences of zeros and ones, two code drivers OOKs, which generates the electrical signal with flexible definition of zeros and ones and the transition between them, laser CW as an optical source and a signal analyzer. And we need to connect all the elements. Now we need to set the parameters of code driver OOK properly. Now we are setting up the time domain simulation via macros and running the simulation. We are now advancing to the state that we need to achieve. What we want to do now is to switch to the I view and go to control panel I setting bitrate. Here we can set the bitrate depth parameter to bitrate and set the bitrate to the value of the schematic parameter bitrate default. 10 GHz used by the OOK drivers. Although the I doesn't look good yet, it is not a big deal. We are going to get some more data to improve it. But first we want to save our analyzer settings not to lose our work. As a final twist, let's now press F9 or click the arrow below the run button and choose the run option. Here we can specify the number of runs. Let's set it to 10 and click the submit button. As many of you may know, performing multiple simulation runs allow us to accumulate several symbol sequences for better estimation of the statistical characteristics of the signal transmission. At the bottom of the analyzer window, we can find the iteration selector. If we set the mode to stitch and specify the range of runs from 2 to 10, it's going to bring all the data together. Now it looks significantly better, right? Ladies and gentlemen, I think we have all the reasons to be proud of ourselves. We have finally created our PAM4 transmitter. Amazing how fast and easily could we design such a complex structure, isn't it? Thank you very much for watching the tutorial on the PAM4 transmitter. If you like this video, please let us know. If you wish to learn more about VPI Photonics, our services and products, please check our website. Bye-bye!